The objective is to estimate sums and differences using benchmark numbers. Let's estimate the sum of 2 and 1 fifth plus 3 and 7 eighths. What will we do with 2 and 1 fifth? Let's think about rounding it and think about benchmark numbers. 2 and 1 fifth is close to 2. In fact, it's only one-fifth more than two. Let's take a look at a number line and see where it is that these numbers would fall on that number line. Here are the whole numbers two, three, and four. If we had two and one-fifth, then it would be about there on the number line where it would be a little bit past two, in fact, one-fifth past two, and if we were to round it, then we would round down to 2. For 3 and 7 eighths, it would be in between the whole numbers 3 and 4, and would only be 1 eighth away from 4. And in that case, it's closer to 4 than it is to 3, so we would round up to 4. Notice again how close these mixed numbers are to the rounded numbers of 2 and 4. So we have 2 plus 4, which equals 6. So 6 is our estimate. Let's estimate a difference. Here we have 5 and 1 sevenths minus 3 and 1 sixths. And if we're going to estimate the difference, then we will round each of those mixed numbers and then subtract. We'll use a number line again so that we can see where it is that these numbers fall and what they would round to. 3 and 1 6 would be right about there on our number line. And as you can see, it would round to 3. 5 and 1 7th, a little bit past 5 and that would round to 5. So we have 5 minus 3, which equals 2. So our estimated difference for 5 and 1 7th minus 3 and 1 6th is 2. Here we're asked to estimate the sum of 4 and 1 8th plus 3 and 5 tenths. So when we round it and round each of these mixed numbers, 4 and 1 8 does round to 4. 3 and 5 tenths, however, if we were to look at 3 and 5 tenths on a number line, we may recognize that 3 and 5 tenths does equal 3 and 1 half. So that 3 and 5 tenths would go right smack dab in the middle there. And then 3 and 1 half is a benchmark fraction. So we actually keep 3 and 5 tenths. And our estimate for it is 3 and 1 half then. They're the same value. They're the same value there. And then so we can add pretty easily 4 plus 3 and a half. We can use a number line just to show what would happen here. In adding 4 with 3 and a half, we would add those whole numbers first. And that's why we would go ahead and separate out the number line here. So it goes 4, 5, 6, and then 7 for plus 3. And then we still have to go another half. So the plus 1 half would put us at 7 and 1 half. So our estimated sum is 7 and 1 half. And remember, the sum is the answer to an addition problem. Here we're asked to estimate the difference again, and we have 9 and 1 fifth. 9 and 1 fifth is close to 9. 3 and 3 sixths, however, you may recognize that, that 3 and 3 sixths is equal to 3 and 1 half, where we can divide the numerator and denominator by 3. So, from our benchmark fraction then, we have 9 minus 3 and 1 half. Let's use a number line to 
to show how we figure out 9 minus 3 and a half. So here's our number line. We'll mark 9 over here because we know we're subtracting from 9. And it looks like we're subtracting 3 and then also another 1 half. So we'd have to go down to 8, down to 7, and then we have 6 there and we also have 5. So when we go 9 minus 3 and a half, that would actually be 9 minus 3 first, where we subtract the 3, and we're also subtracting the half. So we can break apart 5 and 6, do a half thing, subtract a half, and then we end up at 5 and 1 half. So 9 minus 3 and a half is equal to 5 and 1 half. And so that is our estimate to, for 9 and a fifth minus 3 and 3 sixths. Okay, it's your turn to try. Here we have 9 and 7 twelfths plus 3 and 1 eighth. Pause the video while you do your work. Did you estimate 9 and 7 twelfths as 9 and 1 half? 3 and 1 8 is closer to 3, so we have 9 and a half plus 3, which would equal 12 and 1 half. So the estimated sum is 12 and a half. The key here is to recognize that we know that 1 half does equal 6 twelfths, so 9 and 1 half would equal 9 and 6 twelfths, and then so that's close to the 9 and 7 twelfths there, and that's why we estimate it as nine and a half. Okay, here's another one for you to try. Do use an estimate here, and then also use a number line to show how it is that you figured out the difference. Pause the video while you do your work. Did you estimate three and one-sevenths as three? And one and three-fifths is very close to one and a half. So you'd be working through with 3 minus 1 and a half to be able to figure out that estimate. We'll start at 3 here. Here's 2 and here's 1. If we're subtracting 1 and a half, then we'll subtract 1 first. And then we also have to subtract a half. So our estimate there is going to be 1 and 1 half. Check over your work. One of the big keys is to be able to estimate each of these here close to their benchmark fractions. And then to be able to recognize that 3 and 1 fifth is actually only 1 fifth away from 3 and 1 fifth larger than 3, so we would estimate it as 3. 9 and 3 six is very close to 9 and 1 half. 8 and 5 eighths, well, we know that 8 and 4 eighths does equal 8 and a half. So 8 and 5 eighths is actually close to 8 and a half. It's only 1 eighth more than 8 and a half. And then 1 and 6 sevenths is only 1 seventh away from 2. So knowing how to round these mixed numbers allows you to work with those sums and differences when we are estimating those values. And so that understanding of those benchmark fractions really helps you when working and finding these estimates. So we can check to see whether or not our answers are going to be reasonable when we're figuring out actual sums and differences.